All right, here we go, Jim. Is this the pass? Yeah, I think so. So, folks, here we are. I think this is uh, the pass right here. And uh, me and old me and Heckle and Jekyll has uh, we're slowly but steadily are getting to the end. And I've uh, I can't say that I've loved every minute of it, but I've loved most of it. What do you think, Bob? About the scenery? Everything. This is just amazing. So, I, uh, I recorded a small clip back there as we were coming down, and uh, it just so happened as I, I clicked on the record button, uh, right as the song came on, what are you waiting for? And I think it was rather befitting. So, so far, what would you uh, tell anybody that's thinking about uh, trying to ride to Dead Horse? Well, as the song says, what are you waiting for? This is amazing. I would say this. Uh, get a really good set of tires and fire banks, probably. And that it's probably going to be very difficult for unskilled riders if it's wet. But I think if uh, pretty much anybody... You know, if they've practiced just a little bit and uh, take their time, the rough section's 20 miles an hour, they should be fine, wouldn't you? Yeah. And, you know, like you said, uh, just be attentive to road conditions, be attentive to the trucks that are coming down. Because uh, you want to be able to make it to the end and you want to be able to make it home. But, yeah, definitely... Uh, definitely do this I mean you don't get uh, you know all the videos that we've seen on YouTube uh, and I don't know about you know I don't know what Matt's seen on there but uh, you generally you know we don't see this kind of kind of footage it just don't do it justice does it no it does not And even the ones we're probably making ain't going to do it justice. Well, we'll give it our best effort. So right now we're running, I mean, we could go faster, but we're running like 27 miles an hour. Just easing up the pace. There's been times we've run 45, 50 miles an hour. But in some of the paved sections, we've run a little faster, but... Um, Hold on a minute before you cut the thing back off. Oh, I was trying to take a picture. Oh. But, uh... I mean, it's rugged. But I think it's, uh, it's right pretty. It's pretty impressive how fast they built this road, too, ain't it? Of course, they've had a lot of uh, a lot of maintenance and a lot of fixing it. Oh, there were some waterfalls right there. Did you see those? Yeah, and that's. I was trying to get my head cranked enough, but you know, going up this thing, you gotta you gotta have really be very attentive to what you're doing. Now, this is a place where they sometimes have avalanches in the winter time. Um, and but it's warm today, ain't it? Yes, it is. You know, it was uh, it was strange. Uh, it was uh, forecasted to be uh, rainstorms going through here, passing through. But you know, so far, nothing. Not a not a single thing has uh, not a 
drop of water that was falling on us. And uh, I almost think, just got to go for it, ain't you? Yeah, yeah. If you get the opportunity, just take it. And I ran into uh, I ran into a, a gentleman from uh, New Zealand this morning. Actually, I ran into two of them this morning as I was going to get breakfast. And uh, one of the guys was actually headed back to Fairbanks. He had, uh, he had aggravated an injury, and he wasn't going to attempt it. And you know, my, I told him, I said, well, my wish and my prayer for you is that you could continue on uh, because I think you'll, uh, I think you'll regret. I mean, those guys had their bikes shipped from New, uh, New Zealand. They picked them up in Tacoma. So that's where those guys were from. Well, the two, the two that I ran into, uh, I ran into the guys from Brazil as well, and I talked with them for a little bit. And then, uh, as I was uh, going to get breakfast, that's when I talked with the. Uh, the guys from New Zealand. Now, if you guys can, hopefully you guys can see all this and this footage comes out because this is just wow. <laughs> all right. I've just got mine in third gear, just letting it coast. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. These roads can be extremely treacherous if you are not careful. So like I said, this is definitely not something for an unexperienced rider. Uh, and if, even if you aren't experienced, it doesn't make a difference. You, you can still do it, but you know, find, uh, uh, find something where you can practice on before you, uh, before you start out. And just like a, it's you know, Matt said it before, this, it's not a race to get there, it's, it's a marathon, slow and steady wins the race, and uh, that's what's, that's what's going to get it done. So I would say that, uh, you know, if you're not going to do, you know, a tremendous amount of uh, uh, interstate cruising, that maybe uh, you know a more dual sport bike would would be more appropriate. Uh, you know, uh, KLR or uh, you know one of those type bikes. But if you're doing everything interstate, and then of course an adventure tour is probably the next best option for this. But even if you've riding a hog. You may beat the paint off the thing, but, uh, and you may lose a paneer, but just tighten all your bolts and nuts up and throw you a set of knobbies on that hog and come on. You may have to get it repainted, but you'll be glad that you made it. I love it. Avalanche zone. We got a, a truck coming up, a pickup truck. 